After receiving harsh criticism for saying that people of the Jewish faith were not a specific target in the hostage attack at a Texas synagogue on Saturday, the FBI now says it is investigating the situation as an act of terrorism. But now huge questions about how the Biden administration allowed the perpetrator into America in the first place. The cover of the New York Post asks that very question. The hostage taker's brother told Sky News, he's known to police, he's got a criminal record. That's a quote. He also says his brother was suffering from mental health illness. And reports say he was on the radar of UK intelligence services and they checked him out and cleared him to fly. But still, big red flags over why the feds allowed him to enter the country at JFK Airport around New Year's. He then made his way to Dallas, Texas. Here's the president on that. Apparently, he spent the first night in a homeless shelter. I don't have all the detail yet, so I'm reluctant to go into more, much more detail. But, uh, and allegedly, he purchased it uh, on the street. He was talking about the weapon there. Our own Jesse Waters wants to know who in the administration dropped the ball. This guy wasn't on your radar, Mr. President. You gave him a visa two weeks ago to come into this country. What kind of visa was it? Did you vet him? Was he on a watch list? Usually the feds are all over these people. This guy buys a hot gun off the street two weeks after he gets here. Who was the guy I bought the gun from? They don't even know how he died. Who shot him? There's a lot of suspicious things about this story and a lot of unanswered questions. And hopefully Joe has at least one of those answers in the next 48 hours, because he should be asked about this. Buck Sexton, former CIA analyst and co-host of the Buck Sexton and Clay Travis show in Focus Now. Buck, what, first of all, kind of goes to the very top of the heap of things that you want to know? Jesse Waters asked a lot of great questions. Number one for you. Well, I just got to say, you have to ask if this is someone that doesn't get stopped from coming into the country, who does? Uh, we have all these procedures in place. We have a tremendous amount of what really does feel like security theater and, of course, COVID theater now on top of that when it comes to what's going on in airports and, and the situation of security when it comes to international and domestic flights. So if they're not going to stop someone like this individual, we'd want to know what exactly are those procedures able to do other than harass a whole lot of folks. Um, clearly, this is somebody who slipped through the cracks. You have a known criminal. You have somebody who was certainly on the radar of law enforcement. I would want to know from the uh, MI5 UK side of things, mm -hmm. was he on, these, uh, on the radar of the domestic security apparatus over there? Essentially, was he also a known possible jihadist, somebody who not only had a mental health so, issue and criminal history, but possibly a desire to do exactly what he just did, which is engage in a, a terrorist attack, in this case, an anti-Semitic terrorist attack. So those are all things I think we'll find the days ahead, Harris. And I think what we'll know for sure is the ball was dropped, mistakes were made, and the bureaucracy needs to be held accountable, though I doubt that will actually happen. So talk to me a little bit about what gets a person cleared. I mean, you saw that Sky News report. And is that enough on our end not to know about what was going on with that person? Well, certainly you have to go through uh, some kind of visa process, and it's different depending on the country you're in and what the specific regulations are. When it comes to the U.S. and the U.K., we have excellent intelligence and, and information sharing, so you'd think that this would be a situation where we'd be more likely to actually prevent this kind of Even entry. Even if he was cleared into, by them. Yeah, I'm saying he, he clearly got a visa, so someone somehow along the lines here uh, either didn't do the checking in the databases that they had or beyond that, mm -hmm. uh, this guy was able to perhaps convince if it required. I'd have to look at the specific visa procedures that he went through. But if there was any kind of in-person interview for this, which there are in some cases on the U.K., again, I'd have mm. to look and see. Uh, you'd have to wonder what exactly this guy said he was going to do in the U.S. And then, of course, on the U.S. side, he entered here. He went through customs. He only did what exactly to get through customs? I mean, the dragnet clearly didn't catch him. Wow, that is an excellent point, too, what you just said about the personal interview, because he ended up in a homeless shelter. So, yeah, I, I kind of like to know what he told authorities, too, because he was going to be hungry and without any place to stay. 
Uh, wow, that's a lot. And we're supposed to be in a pandemic where we're checking people for COVID and everything else. Did that come up in the conversation? I mean, I, boy, you just opened a Pandora's box there, Buck. Well, that's what happens when you start to look at failures of the security apparatus, right? The moment you find an incident like this that, you know, thankfully did not result in any innocent casualties, but very easily could have, you have to wonder, we have this massive security apparatus. We spend billions and billions of dollars a year on it. We all go through a tremendous amount of irritation and frustration with customs, with visas, with all these different uh, aspects, all these uh, supposed uh, levels of security enhancement. Right. And if they don't stop this guy, you wonder who exactly who are they, they stopping stop? or is this just theatrics? Are they just harassing people and not actually getting to the security component? Uh, I'll move to the Senate Democrats today are set to forge ahead with their already doomed election overhaul legislation. And Democrats continue to rage against Senators Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin, more moderates in their party. During events honoring MLK Jr. yesterday, Dems called out the pair for their refusal to change what civil rights leaders call the Jim Crow filibuster. At issue, the two senators' commitment to preserving the filibuster, therefore tanking the Dems' agenda. Vice President Kamala Harris here. There are 100 members of the United States Senate, and I'm not going to absolve, nor should any of us, absolve any member of the United States Senate from taking on a responsibility to follow through on the oath that they all took to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Also uh, letting it rip, you might say, Senator Raphael Warnock, who made history last year when he was elected Georgia's first black senator. I submit that members of the Senate, regardless of their party, uh, no longer have to ask what we would have done then. We're doing whatever we would have done then right now. This is a moral moment. Uh, this is a 1965 moment because what they've done is they've removed the protections that we secured in 1965. And we've seen the mushrooming of all of these terrible voter suppression laws all across the country. Democratic political consultant Tom Watson took it to a whole new level by tweeting this. To be blunt, Senator Sinema chose her side, and that side is white supremacy. That's who she is. That's what defines her now. Buck Sexton. I mean, this is absurd. It's just emotions in place of an argument here when it comes to actual voting protections and, and procedures. Uh, the reality is they know this is not going anywhere. Cinema and Mansion aren't going to change their minds on this when they've made that quite clear because it is about the filibuster and the Senate and the institution and Democrats, as we remember for four years under Trump, pretended to care so much about the sacred institutions of our democracy. And now all of a sudden they're willing to tear down those institutions in order to save them. And I just say mm. this, the ultimate goal here isn't voting rights. It isn't actually making sure that there's no discrimination in the voting procedures. It's to give the Democrat base an excuse to feel morally superior to Republicans on this phantom issue of voter suppression, which they never actually give any evidence of. They never give you the people. They never show you who well, can't vote over this, because really they just want to point at Republicans and say, if you don't allow us to change the election laws like we did in 2020, which we said was an emergency for a pandemic, you're racist. That's really what this comes down to. That's all they have to offer the American mm -hmm. voter going to the midterms. We say the Republicans are racist and you don't want to be a part of that, do you? It's a pathetic push. I hope it doesn't work. Buck, thank you for being in focus today. Thanks so much for having me. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.